so this is a demo of IBM Business Analytics to help a hospital or healthcare provider understand the readmission rates for their patient population. So in this demo, which we'll see shortly, we're going to analyze patient data. And this is data about patients that onboard into a local hospital with various levels of pneumonia, maybe acute or non-acute ammonia, pneumonia conditions. And what we're going to see here is that we are trying to improve our ability to do a readmission study. So we might take these patients and follow them through, maybe marry up the historical data with the patient and some contextual data, maybe data in the form of notes as the patient works their way through their treatment path at the hospital. And once the patient, patient is on the verge of being released, we are going to figure out from a dis, discharge consultation perspective whether to retain that patient for further study if they're high risk or maybe release them at, if they're a low risk for readmit. But in that fuzzy gray area known as discharge consultation, we're going to need SPSS analytics to help us determine whether the patient should be left behind or should be released. And those analytics will help us by providing us with some visualizations. And we'll even go so far as to slot a patient into a high risk or a lower risk tier so we can make a decision about how to process that patient going forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you a snapshot of the data. So this slide depicts data on 357 patients that were onboarded into a local hospital. Now these patients come in with pneumonia conditions any time of year. Every age bracket of patients is represented in the population and they have different levels of morbidity, sometimes morbid, sometimes non-morbid conditions. You can see here that various types of pneumonia are represented and then when the patient onboards they might go into either a skilled nursing facility or the ER or into an elective part of the hospital. And then there's other ancillary types of conditions present. Maybe there's a cough or not a cough. And we even pull in, although it's not shown here, the, the temperature of the patient and other statistics that we retain when the patient comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into SPSS Modeler. So the IBM SPSS product, first of all, reads in your source data. You can see here that we've got various types of information that we're going to look at. We have a statistics file on these patients. So we pull this in from the palette and we point this here at the data file and it reads it in so you can see a copy of the same data file I showed you earlier. So now that we have the file intact, we're going to take the step of creating this numerical index called numeric readmission. We're going to recode the readmission from a yes, no variable to a one, zero variable. And this comes to us from the field operations tab. And if I highlight the derive algorithm, it says that we can allow new fields to be created. So I'm just going to put this here for reference. And double clicking, you can see that I have set up this readmission field so that if it's a yes, we recode it as a one. That's where this calculator comes in handy. We can put any expression we want and check it and build it. And if it's not a yes, it comes in as a zero. And if I hit the preview button, you're going to see that the numeric readmission rates are going to average out to a zero or a one. And this allows us to take the average of different parts of the portfolio to see if that patient part of the portfolio falls into a low risk or high risk category. So I'm going to close that out. And now what we've done is we have set this up so that we can view this data. We've actually taken in all these various data elements as inputs for analysis. We're not going to really worry about the numeric readmission rate. And we're going to get some information that we think is outside the scope of this study out of there by clicking none. In other words, not looking at these variables. So as we do this, we're prepping the file so that we can do some analytics and some graphing. So now, when I'm getting ready to model the data, I go to the modeling tab, I go to the segmentation step, and we are going to select a clustering method. And the clustering method that we select 
is going to divvy up the data into several populations. I'm going to highlight this algorithm here, and when I double-click on this clustering node, it puts it to the right. And what I've done is I've selected every field that I want to model, and I run this by hitting the Run button, and it creates this nugget with two different patient populations. So let's compare what's in these populations. We've got one peer group that's 65 years old. Typically, they'll get admitted to the ER. And there's another peer group that's older, that's 68. And this peer group is being admitted at a lower rate into the ER. So you can see there's many similarities. There's some differences. Some of these patients are admitted or discharged after being held over for many months, and some of them are admitted and discharged in the same month. So there's different lengths of stay involved, and we would suspect that admission rates or readmission rates would differ. So what we're going to do now is we're going to prep the file to take a look at the peer groups. I'm going to come in here, pull in this metadata element. So metadata is a way to code your field so that they perform the way you want them to perform. I'm going to go into the peer group category and read this in, and you're going to see that there's a two or a one category that we're going to make the target of this study. So now I can visualize the data by graphing it. I click on the graph function, and you can see under graph board we can create graphs based on selected fields. So let's put this here as a reminder. So now I'm going to click on this, double click. And now I'm going to build out the graph that takes a look at the different peer groups. So peer group 1 versus 2, we're going to do a bar chart on it. And clicking on the Detailed tab, I'm going to click all the way down and find those readmission rates. Now, we're going to color code this in such a way that you can see differences. So you can see one group has a higher readmission rate than another group. So we're going to be curious about the readmit rate here in red. So now we want to develop some business rules about readmission. That takes us to the modeling tab. And if we go to the classification step, we actually have four different ways of creating business rules, from shade to quest. These are various decision rule trees that are either complex or simple. We're going to hook in a very complex tree here and work with it because we want a lot of detail. And as I open this up, we're going to find our target. That target, by the way, is peer group. So I'm going to highlight it and move it up to the top. And then there's other elements here that maybe we want to leave and some that we want to retain. So let's get rid of some of these things that are kind of a distraction. So now we've got the month that the patient onboarded and, and was released, we have some morbidity codes and we know about the illnesses. We're going to click on Build Options. And interactively, we're going to build out this decision tree. And if you recall, the one tree had a higher rate or had a higher readmission rate than the other. Let's open this up, maybe maximize the screen, and then take a look at severity of illness. And you can see that when the pneumonia is categorized as acute and severe, you're going to go into the higher risk category versus the other conditions. And then if I want to split this out more, I can double click on each node. And what it will do is it will give us some insight. You can see that discharge month seems to be an issue. And we can do this continuously or click here on the button that says Grow Tree and grow a fairly complex tree from scratch. So now that we've grown this, I'm going to use this tree map to show you that this is a fairly complex tree, but we're going to simplify it by clicking on Generate Rule Set. And what this does is this gives us business rules for how to handle these populations. And you can see here that in the higher risk population, there's actually lots of different business rules that we would find of interest. You can see the antibiotic and when it was administered could be important. Maybe the discharge and the admission month. So now we're getting a sense that during certain months readmission rates are higher as well as if antibiotics were admitted. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to create 
a rule trace on this. We're just going to create 13 different business rules and assign them. And they come in here. Right click, connect. And once again, we're going to preview it. I'm going to the right. You can see that everything is tagged with an individual business rule. So now that I have that, I can run another graph. But now I'm down to the business rule level. And once again, I'm going to do a count of a bar count. I'm going to take a look at the readmission rates, which again are pretty different. And you can see here there's a group right here. So that one has what appears to be like a 62% readmission rate. So that's going to be very interesting. So if we look at that, you can see that when the antibiotic is administered is important, and so is the severity of the illness. So I could come in now and add a few more variables or dimensions here. So severity of illness, we might want to put in here. Let's use that alphabetically. And then alphabetically, let's select the first day the antibiotic was administered. And so now we get a chart which zeroes in on the problem. And it looks like there were a lot of individuals with acute and severe pneumonia who came in. And when they came in with acute and severe conditions and the antibiotic was administered on the second day, they had a 62% relapse rate. So again, to summarize, what we have done is we've done the following. We've taken this data and we've taken a look at a discharge consultation path. And when we were uncertain about what route to take, we created visualizations that pinpointed which two dimensions were the most important dimensions for figuring out readmission rates so that now we can zero in on that part of the portfolio for patients that got their antibiotic on day two that had acute and severe conditions. And hopefully going forward, we're going to intervene early to prevent that patient from being readmitted or that patient being in a high-risk segment.